Thank you for watching another episode of Future Shapers, where myself, Emma Kirk, talks to women in sport about their roles and about how they inspire other women. Today I'm joined by Naz. I'm going to talk a little bit about personal training and how she got into the fitness industry. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I would like to start by saying I think your, your Instagram is amazing. Oh, thank you so much. Very inspirational. Thank you so which much. Which is why I would like to talk to you today. Mm -hmm. How did you get into the whole fitness industry? Let's go back about 11 years. Um, prior to getting pregnant with my son, uh, I was going through a tough time. Um, and my friend dragged me, literally dragged me <laughs> to aerobics. And I remember feeling great after. I hated it for that hour, but after I loved it. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And then I got pregnant with my son. Um, and after he was born, like most women, I thought, mm, you know, the bounce back thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to bounce back. Um, so I got into fitness at that point, you know, somewhat... Um, for the wrong reasons, let's put it that way, for the wrong reasons, because really, we don't need to bounce back after mm. we've had kids, you know. I think there's a big issue, though, with when you see celebrities that bounce yes. back, mm. you know, I mean, they, they have a lot of support yeah. and a lot of um, so, um, so, certain surgeries mm -hmm. that help them achieve Oh, that. yes. But that's like a role model that then is delivered yeah. for you, isn't yeah. it, as a normal mum? Yeah, and because it was so long back... Um, at the time, there wasn't the information that there is now, the internet help, you know, all that. There's not, there's no move, there were no movements back then that there are now. Um, so I did, I wanted to bounce back and I was going through postnatal depression. So, you know, the, the pressure was on yeah. to achieve a certain look. Um, but then I loved, you know, the rush of endorphins and all that. And I, you know, it was sporadic mm -hmm. um, until about five odd years ago where... I had a nervous breakdown. Something happened and I had a nervous breakdown and it took me a good few years to come out of it. But those few years, I did nothing. I didn't want to move. I wanted, you know, my diet truthfully consisted of donuts, muffins, mm -hmm. biscuits, everything at breakfast, lunch, dinner. Mm -hmm. To the point where, and my husband has a massive sweet, sweet tooth. He even said to me one day, he said, Naz, are you sure you want that donut? And I was like, don't. <laughs> no, I, I know what I'm doing, and I know it's not correct, but I can't. I don't have the willpower. Did you know what was happening to you? No, no, not at all. In in that time, I had no idea. I was just thinking, I'm sad, and I just burst into tears. But and then it would. It was so strange because there's one incident I remember so clearly. I was cooking, and it's funny how life goes on. Yeah. I have kids to look after, I have a husband, and I'm cooking, and mid-stir, I burst into tears. There's no one else in the house, mm -hmm. and I burst into tears, and I ring my best friend, and I say, like, you know, and she hears me crying, and she says, oh, no, 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 I was coming anyway. She wasn't. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, yeah. But she was like, oh, yeah, I'm coming anyway, and she came, and she was like, Naz, I've never seen you like this. Like, you've always been my support system. What's going on? And I was like, I don't know, but in the time it took for her to come... I'm on my kitchen floor in fetal position, bawling my eyes out. No idea why. So, no. And yet, to now, looking back, hindsight is saying, why did you not click on that something was mm. severely going wrong? But no, at the time, it was like, okay, I've cried it out. I feel a bit better. Back to cooking again. How did you get out of that? There was, I just remember, it's all much of a blur, to be quite honest, because what triggered it was uh, the passing of an uncle who was like a staple father figure in my childhood growing up. Um, when he passed away, that sort of triggered everything. And then those couple of years are a blur. I just have moments that I remember. And towards the end, I remember thinking, I don't want to feel this way anymore. Yeah. I don't want to be like this. Um... And I was suffering from migraines because of it. I was, you know, I was having about two or three migraines a week. And that would mean that my whole week would go. Because obviously, once you've had one migraine, you have a few days that you need to recover from that mm. one. I wasn't sleeping on a night. I was literally sleep sleeping in 20-minute increments. To the point where I remember one night, my husband woke me up. 
And I said, what's wrong? And he said, why are you sat up? I said, what are you talking about? And I was literally sat upright like this. I said, what are you talking about? He said, you're sat up. Why? Mm -hmm. And I was just, I mean, I don't know how he did a bolt. Because I would have, I would have thought <laughs> possession and run. I don't know how he did it. But he said, you know, he goes, you sat up. And it's because I was so exhausted that I'm just sleeping anywhere to then mm. just wake up again after 20 minutes. So I remember just thinking, I can't carry on like this. I don't want to feel like this. So one day, um, I just got up and I thought, okay, I want to go to Zumba. I just want to go to Zumba. That's it. Like, no ties, no food. That I'm watching nothing. I'm just going to Zumba. And that's where I started. And then they had, um, there's the Leeds Girls Can initiative in Leeds and they'd started like the park, uh, couch to 5k sorry in uh, the local park and I thought okay I'm going to start that as well but the thing is when you do something for yourself um, and you are your own leader or the person you answer to you only take it so far mm -hmm. so I would go if I felt like it yeah or I'd make a little excuse and go, mm, I don't feel like it today um but then what ended up happening was I thought, okay, enough's enough. You know, I'm taking on a personal trainer. So I joined the gym and I took on a personal trainer. And I loved training with her. And it meant even when I didn't want to go, I was going. Yeah. I've paid for this woman now. <laughs> I have to. And that's what inspired me. I thought, wait, I want to do this. I want to be that person. I want to be that. And the thing was that the only thing that I would have changed was the gym environment is so scary yeah. for someone walking in for the first time. It's scary anyway, even now, I, yeah. I'm intimidated. But it's scary overall, especially when you're first starting out, because all the equipment, all the people, all the fit people, yeah. you know, it's yeah. everything. Um, and I thought, you know what, I want to be a personal trainer that can go to ladies' houses, help them, you know, build up confidence, yeah. learn how to use weights, things like that. So when they do, or if they do, decide to go to a gym, Fantastic. They have like a basis foundation that they can build off of. They're confident enough. It is. I think it is something that women, more than men, I mean, I know that men will find possibly find a gym mm. intimidating. Mm. But as a woman, you know, there's all the added elements yeah. of, you know, if I lift weights, mm -hmm. is it going to be like seen to be manly? Mm. And, and it is a struggle, I think, within fitness. Yeah. There's the kind of the branch of, you know, if you go to a gym and you want to be a bikini model mm -hmm. or, you know, you go to the gym and just do cardio. Yeah. How do you how do you convince or change a lady's mind to say, actually, you know, weights are useful because it helps you to keep your, your, your muscles stronger, it helps with balance. I actually have a friend um, who I train in her house, so I take all the weights and that with me. And initially she was like, nope, I'm not touching those. Mm -hmm. Naz, no. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, we won't. Let's do body weight. Started off with body weight, went into resistance bands. And I said, okay, let's trial it. You know, you, you, there's only so much you can do here. Let's add a bit on. And at first, you're like, mm, now, Naz, bring the weights. <laughs> bring the weights. <laughs> what do you prefer? Do you prefer the gym environment or training in the home? For myself, gym environment but that's because I have a personal trainer mm -hmm. and that's something that you know I, I like to get out there because I think the you know you mentioned my Instagram I have it there because I think it's so important to show the reality um, I'm not the fittest mm -hmm. physically and that's okay I'm okay I'm never gonna be that person that will show my abs because of my religion my own personal beliefs I'm not gonna be that person. so there's no point me trying to attain something that is really so you can show it off. Yeah. I'm not here for that. I want to be healthy. Yeah. But I also want to show that we struggle. You know, on Instagram, it's such a look at me. I'm like this. Or look at this. You know, I got this. And the reality is that we all struggle. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't do chin ups. I'm a personal trainer. Someone hearing that would be like, <gasps> why? You should be able to, but the truth is I can't. But I've got a personal trainer to help me get there because I can't push myself the way that she can when I know I'm being held accountable. Someone's sitting there and saying, 
Come on, Naz, you've got it. Come on, mm-hmm. do it. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter. I think that's such an important point, though, that you've raised there, because, you know, we look at the images on Instagram. Let's face it, there's probably the top percent of your life yeah. that you capture an image, and that's the one you show off to the world. Mm-hmm. You know, the majority of people, e- even the people who have abs, they're not like that 100% of the time. Mm. And it is very difficult to keep that year round. Yeah. So I think what you're, that's why I said your Instagram to me is very inspirational mm-hmm. because it is real and it isn't, there's no hiding behind an image. Mm-hmm. You, what I see on yours is mm-hmm. truth. It is about the fact that, you know what, this isn't easy. And actually I find it very interesting that as a personal trainer, you have a personal trainer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, I train, but mm. I, I will train myself mm. and I push myself, mm. but only if I have a goal. Yeah. So yeah. if I have a goal and an aim, mm-hmm. I will push myself yeah. to get there. Yeah. Otherwise, I just kind of find myself mm-hmm. fumbling around mm-hmm. a little bit. Yeah. yeah, And that's why, like, I've got this personal trainer. I'm like, no, I need to be held accountable. I know myself. Mm. And I, I will faff about. I know I'll go in, touch that, touch that, and, oh, good workout. Yeah, take a couple pictures. <laughs> exactly. Um, but no, and that's why I, I've done personal training, and though that's a passion of mine, I thrive in the classroom environment you know the classes yeah i love a good class so zumba till this day is my most favorite activity really yep i love zumba i'm not qualified in zumba so i go in someone else's class and it's funny because i have a class in the gym that i lead and one of the ladies came in today um and she said to me she said you know i met so and so and she said wait, I see her in body pump. How does she then lead a class? Why does she come to body pump? Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, but I enjoy weightlifting that way rather than going out and doing it on my own. Yeah. I'd rather do it like, like this. I, I think there's an also, also a lot of uh, stepping back mm. and having that opportunity. Because as a personal trainer or someone leading the class, you have to be on point, mm-hmm. you have to be aware mm-hmm. constantly. And there's an awful lot more involved than just standing at the front. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but if you if you're doing a class, mm-hmm. you can take a step back and let someone else tell you what to do. Mhm. Mm-hmm. And it almost feels like yeah. a break. Yeah. 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 There's no thought to it. But then I also love leading the classes. I have like an alter ego that comes out. <laughs> I really do. And I'm like, "Come on, you've got this." And you know, anyone seeing me out of that class and then in is like, "Do you become like really American?" No, I try not to. I try not to, but the desire is there. The desire's there. And it doesn't help because what I'm trained in to lead a class for is called Pop Pilates. It is Pilates that is faster. I can't do slow exercises. I cannot. I tried yoga. I've tried Pilates. No. My brain, up, out that door. Can't do it. Yeah. But this, this is like Pilates, very Pilates based, but it's in time with pop music, so it's faster. And it means that I'm getting all the benefits of Pilates. And it's the one exercise that I see like a difference like that. And because I'm shorter, when I am weightlifting, I feel like squatty. Very like my muscles contract and they get thickened out quickly. And I like my muscles to be lengthened out. And this helps me really well. Um, And everyone that's taken the class has been like, you didn't think it was going to be like this. You know, I woke up aching. I have this lady, bless her, she's so lovely, that comes to the class and she's like, Naz. I woke up and I was aching. I was in the middle of the night having to sit up to turn around (laughs) because my abs were hurting. But I thought, I love that class. I'm going every week. And it's it's fantastic. So where do you do that class? Um at the moment it's in JD, uh James. Uh the the one in Seacroft. Mm -hmm. Um but hopefully in a few other places, uh through Leeds Girls Camp because I'm their ambassador. It sounds really good fun. Because like yourself. I don't do slow, anything slow. No, so no. It sounds really good. You should come and try yeah, it. Yeah, I might do, actually. Mm, yeah. You should. What are, your, what are your own personal goals, then, for your career and perhaps for where you see yourself? <clears throat> okay, do, world domination, I can feel that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help, help it. I've always been entrepreneurial. I've <laughs> always had that in me. Um, it's funny because I used to be a primary school teacher. Mm-hmm. And, and then when I had my own kids, I was like, no, no. That's a kid overload. I can't deal with 30 <laughs> to then come home and deal with two, no. So, you know, and then over the years, I just dabbled in this and dabbled in that. And then now, 
I was saying to my husband as well, um, I said, you know, the one thing that I don't see is exercise tops that cover us where we are comfortable to go and work out in the gym environment. You know, I want to create it. Mm -hmm. I want to make it something that I feel isn't being catered to. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are a few brands out there that do, and I'm not talking Nike, uh, Adidas. I'm talking like you know, Muslim female-led brands. Yeah. Um, but they're not something I like. Good sportswear in the sense of pretty things. Yeah. Like if it's pretty, I'm like, oh, I want to wear that. Mm -hmm. Like I want to look pretty in that. I want to go to the gym in that. So I was like, okay, I want to create stuff that's designed by me. I don't have a designing background, but I want to do it. So you know, this is this is my first top mm -hmm. that I've created. Um, we have the other one going into production soon um, and have like all these ideas so ideally I want to run my classes I don't want to give those up I want to do my you know go home to the ladies houses you know encourage them that confidence boost that I see in those ladies it's so rewarding you know it's not about the money at all at that point it's about you can see them physically change the way they carry themselves is so much more different and then i've had a couple that have then gone on to join the gym and they're so much you know their whole demeanor's changed they're not who they were when i first met them mm -hmm. and i love that you facilitated that though so that that gives you a buzz as well yeah it? of course it's yeah. why i got into it in the first place yeah. you know so there was that, and then um, I want to have my own line of sportswear tops. Mm -hmm. I really do. I want to cater for the market that is, you know, and it's not just about being Muslim. I know so many, um, you know, non-Muslim women that are like, no, we don't, we don't want to go in, you know, just a sports bra or whatever. You know, if you do, I, great. I am 100% in that camp. Yeah. I don't go to a gym in a sports bra. No, I want to be covered up, thank you very much. Yeah. I don't particularly want people looking at me mm -hmm. while I'm training. That's yeah. not why I'm there. Exactly. You know, I will yeah. quite happily put a picture on Instagram mm -hmm. myself mm -hmm. in a hoodie, yeah. tracky bottoms, <laughs> and say, look, you know, actually, you can work out in other other yeah. clothes yeah. that yeah. are not skin tight. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's about comfort zones. It's about saying, okay, you know, go... It's like in JD, they have a ladies only section and they have the mixed section. And the mixed section, if you're on the treadmill, you have a good overview over everyone else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it is intimidating because, you know, you know, and it's not about, oh, every guy's checking me out. It's not about that. It's no. about just feeling comfortable in your own skin. Mm -hmm. Feeling comfortable with what you're doing. And if that means that you are covered up the way that suits you, yeah. why not? You know, and if you're comfortable in a sport brand, great. More yeah. power to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like don't don't do too many things where they might fall out though. You know? but yeah, yeah. No one wants to see that. No one wants to see that. Well, it's been absolutely amazing talking to you. Thank you very much for popping in. No, thank you for having me. Please let me know when your clothing range is out. I would definitely like to share that for you. I will do. Thank you so much. I appreciate the support. Thank, thank you. you. If you wish to contact us or Naz about anything you've seen today or any other topic, please do get in touch. Our details are on the screen. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Emma Kirk. Goodbye for now.